Because anybody can come out and say, hey, I want to fuck you. Yeah. If you can get there without Not my action. experience. <laughs> <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. Football season, and I couldn't give one fucking dick if you use promo code this weekend because time is of the essence to talk about Taylor Swift. We're not fucking wasting any time. Not that that's a waste of time using the doing the uh, reads because those are fucking awesome. Again, we don't have to do the reads. I'm just so good at them that we choose to. That's how we do the DraftKings thing. So play it with promo code Brunch, and hopefully you'll do as well as Taylor did because reputation is fucking awesome. I think it's awesome. I am I'm, I'm wildly impressed. I'm almost ready to tweet fucking reputation better than 1989 and then delete uh, Twitter anyway because I just want because I fucking hate you guys all so much. In. I only like three of you left on Twitter. <laughs> I've fucking deteriorated so much on social media. My life is miserable. Uh, this album is so fucking good. We both arrived at the same conclusion pretty much immediately. Uh, well, her trick with putting out a mediocre song first and then giving you the good shit. She just this time she just put out all mediocre songs yes. first and three then of them. The album was no all uh, all the the ones that she, how many did three she put right out? gorgeous uh, gorgeous look what you made me do ready, ready for, for it, it. And, uh, oh, four. yeah yeah okay, four. four and those are the first uh, again we haven't listened to it because it's not out yet um, <laughs> but I was texting with Feidelberg who also hasn't listened to it and he said the same thing like like you texted me about it like I tweeted about it Feidelberg texted me about it. All same fucking thing. All these songs are better than all those songs. Yes, absolutely. And I think there's a handful of people in the world in the music industry that can pull that move. It's just, I love that. It's she just did that it. it's such a fucking diabolical move. I, I, my only choice is to respect it because she is again one of the a handful of people that can pull that move. Where it's like you are so hungry for my new shit mm. that I'm going to give you the worst of what I've got. And you're going to fucking eat it up and you're still going to buy my album. You're still going to listen right. to my album because everybody else in the world has to give you their best shit to convince you to listen to the yes, album. or else you're gone. Or else you're gone. Yeah. She gives you your worst shit, sets the bar really low, and then comes out with the rest of it and everybody's like, holy fuck, didn't see this coming. Like even fucking Imagine Dragons, they're they're like borderline hit makers with what they had with their uh, – I don't know if that was their first album whatever. The only album that, that we know, the one with Radioactive, mm-hmm. when they put out that follow up album they had to come with the lightning and the dun- they had to come with like you a fucking, fucking love that jam. song that's, a, that's <laughs> such a good song if they came out with a fucking bad song i'd be like imagine dragons done with you or at least you're right. on my back burner and you're running the risk of if if i'm because i'm always listening to shit and i'm always like stuck on one album that i really like so if you come out with something that doesn't grab my interest right away you're fucking gone. Right. You have, there's a really short leash unless you're a fucking megastar. But she doesn't have to do that. And she didn't have to do it she, she, one song at a time. She would start with, like I said, one okay song, whatever. You're like, is this project going to be Taylor's best? Because this song isn't Taylor's song best. Stinks. And then she fucking follows up with, like, I Knew You Were Trouble or uh, I forget what was the second one off of uh, 1989. Blank Space. Mm-hmm. So, you're like, like, classic songs. And you're like, okay. You got me. I'm in. Well, this time around, she just she just did doubled, all of them. Yeah, were she doubled up with she like a bunch of bad ones. No, she quadrupled down. And the reason I fucking love the move is because it's November 10th now. We already have, we already we're, we've lived through it. Yeah. As it's going on, you're like, this girl is a dick, <laughs> right? And uh, the dummies at the fucking ringer are writing things about like, has Taylor fallen is she off? Dead? Whoa, whoa, yes. whoa, whoa, yeah. I gotta say, credit to us. We said this was happening the yeah, whole fucking we way. Like we, again, like. You're you're prone to the irrational because you you like Taylor Swift too much, mm-hmm. but this is as yeah, level headed. But that's fucking like when Taylor somebody, that's takes when, as you get. But that's like podcast. when somebody criticizes me for being like a Bruins fan, so I can't have fucking rational takes on the Bruins. Right. I like, fucking lo- I right. love I love the Bruins. I love Taylor Swift. Right. I can recognize when they do something fucking you bad. You still think about it. Yes. Versus like I'm an intelligent person who yes. thinks rationally. Yeah. I was th- like I was getting fired up as I was listening and realizing that that we were right. I was like, fuck, we are so important 
<laughs> I'm like I'm not kidding. I don't read a lot of. Unfortunately, I come. Ac- people send me Taylor Swift stuff because they're like that. That's what my fucking mentions are. Other like people calling me an asshole or people sending me stuff that like the Ringer has written. And like, oh boy, you're not gonna like this, and I don't fucking like it because it's <laughs> dumb. So so much dumb shit is said about Taylor Swift, and people are just so prone to fucking losing their minds. I was talking to a Taylor Swift fan the other day, and she was saying like. Like same thing we say, like just f- fucking keep all, a level all head. The, yeah, all just the wait for the good stuff. It's coming. She, yeah. she's not gonna give you bad <laughs> stuff all the way through. We said with each bad song, we said, all right, this is not her best. Right, this but, isn't it. But there's reason to keep your head up. Right, like we didn't say, all right, we the, the good songs were coming. Yeah, and as she, yep. ca- it was you know what we were doing. We were taking pitches. We were fucking. It was yeah, the home right, run yeah. derby. We yeah. know that we're gonna be fucking we juicing. Kept, we kept a good eye. Yeah, we know we're gonna have the kids out there fucking running around, seeing the ball sail over their fucking heads. But we're not just gonna fucking swing at anything. The just money because, balls are coming. Yes, and the fucking gold balls, man. Let's rattle off some of these gold balls. Uh, my favorite one. Yes. So I'll say the most important one is. Uh, Wait, by the way, before we get into track by track, I want to say something that I thought of when we came up with this because the album leaked. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't listen to it. We because, didn't listen to it. Good on because, us because uh, we're very respectful. Yes, but I would say if we did listen to it, I would feel better about listening to it now than I have in the past with previous leaks because uh, streaming services have made it a lot easier to uh, do the disrespectful disrespectful move of uh, of getting a leak of an album. Yeah, because. Previously, artists rely on you to buy their shit. Right. And now nobody buys shit anymore. They just like listen on streaming services. Yes. So if you if you get a leak and you listen to a leak, it doesn't really do the artist that much damage other than listening to them like 24 hours before they want you to. Well, my thing is like, you just better be fucking good about it. I mean, it's a total honor system thing, but like, you better fucking go to concerts. You better yeah. buy merch. Um, I... Support them in any way you can if you like right, their work. Right, because that's how they're gonna make. Right. That's how they're gonna make money anyway. I mean, the again, you look at some of the the numbers and the money that people make off streaming. It's but fucking like, nothing. But in years past, like John Mayer's had stuff leaked, and like mm. I've I've too much respect for John Mayer to right. fucking get so, a well, leak there goes that album. money. Right. Yeah. And so I've waited until the day of to actually fucking buy the album. Now I don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I do it anyway because I'm respectful. All right, let's get into this. Okay. So the most important one is uh, I'm sorry. Let me pull up the track list but the one with sheeran in future because yeah, uh, that endgame. was endgame it's the second song on the album and that is the everything's going to be all right song and well uh, that's me, the first song you hear other than right, the one that you, you automatically before, you automatically fucking skip ready for it because you've already i've also got shit. a ready for it take coming okay. up but. uh but endgame i was very worried for like 20 seconds because it comes in and taylor swift is doing the old like endgame is offensive uh, how so? I'm like I'm not like I I am dead serious. I think that that song is that Taylor Swift is offensive on that song. Why? Like appropriating black culture. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that. She, she very much comes in like I'm here to rap. Like her, like, no, I'm here like to her, be like a hip hop. Her, her drawl, the way she yeah. speaks, like that. Like you're, it's cringeworthy. Yeah, that, like that, like that, in the first twenty seconds, I was like, oh fuck, and, are we really and doing ready this? for it? Like the clear in the throat, the rapping. That's like I kind of roll my eyes that I don't think that's a very good song, but. What she does at the beginning of Endgame, I, I've listened to it twice. And the first time I was like, oh, this is going to take some getting used to. And on the second time, I was like, no, this isn't fucking okay. Like she, So th- this, she'll get, she'll get ripped for that. You think so? I think so. And I think, it's the, I think it's deserved. I think it's a good song. I think that she's great aside from it. But uh, just aside from straight up just jacking Drake and, and Kendrick's flow, like the way the da-da-da-da-da-da-da. The, yeah. Like... You're a fucking white kid from fucking Pennsylvania, Taylor. <laughs> like, the, the, there has to be a line somewhere. Yeah. Obviously, black people will be a lot more offended than I am, but I kind of see that, and that's but, I think that's not okay. Yeah, I mean, I I think Endgame's a really good song. I I liked it. Uh, it was a heater. Yeah. But it comes in, and it's it's a lot of cringe right off the bat. And, yeah. And if when that's the first thing that you hear going yeah. into the album. It's it gets jacked up and amplified even more. Right, but for I mean, future saves the day yeah, immediately. Com- and we've both established I'm on board. that we're not future guys. I think guys. the future is very overrated. Okay, we we've established yeah. that plenty of times in the past. He comes in fucking hot. Yes, and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad they have him go first. And yes, yeah. Sheeran, who- <laughs> can you imagine going from the cringeworthy opening twenty seconds to uh, to Ed Sheeran, who right. who kills gets, it on so the Sheeran, song, so kills it on the song, and but he does, but he does it like in so his Sheeran, own 
intonation. So, yes, exactly. And, I mean, I'm not the fucking judge of this, but I just think, and it just it's just my own opinion, the way I hear it, um, the way some people, some white people rap, I it doesn't... Give me a. I don't think for a fucking second like they're trying to. They're trying to sound like a black person, or they're trying right. to do White this, or they're should be able or to like rap. they're doing these yeah. stereotypes or whatever. But when, but when Taylor does at the beginning of the song, I'm like, all right, I, I can imagine people will be offended by this. Yeah, I but th- but Sheeran absolutely not because Sheeran right. can rap. He and can that's rap. The thing. Yeah, like Taylor. This isn't a new thing for and, him either. Right, and that's what. Yes, exactly. Um, that's actually what made me love Ed Sheeran when I uh, was on my UK battle rap kick. I was watching a really old video, and Ed Sheeran, who was not popular at the time, was a judge in it. And I thought that was really fucking cool. He was like, and he talked the same way they all do, like, yo, what up? It's your boy, Ed Sheeran. I got to say, uh, Shuffle T killed the first verse. Marlo kind of stepped on, on him a little bit. I'm going Marlo. Like, something like that. And I just thought that was really cool. But he's like, he's a gifted musician. He's a gifted right. rapper. Taylor it- Swift... It's I, easier to swallow Ed Sheeran doing the rap thing too because he's slowly gotten into that space. Like he's covered rap songs. Oh yeah, he's, he's always he's worked he's, with rappers. Yeah, he raps he, on songs. He, he did raps the, the, songs. the Hoodie Allen song. Great and, song. And like he doesn't, he doesn't. Oh, it feels like he's never overstepped. Yeah. Taylor Swift. It's like she worked with. She worked with. She did the joking T Pain thing. Then she worked with Kendrick once, and uh, and then she was like, okay, now I can rap. Yeah. So uh, it, it's she. She forced herself into that space a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, but other than that. Great song again. Just especially, it stood on the second listen because with these things, especially with uh, with kind of top forty pop albums, the first your first uh, impression of something might be wrong. You might uh, mix it up. You know, like I like when I was first listening to uh, Call It What You Want. Yes, uh, I was like, this could conceivably be the best of of this batch of songs, the ones that were released before. And the more like once I got to the chorus, I was like, yeah, this isn't very good. And the more I listened to it, I was like, yeah, it's it's not great. Um, but with that, with uh, Endgame, the first time I listened to it, I was like, that was a little interesting that uh, she's kind of biting Drake the way she is. And basically, like, I, I just don't like the stealing the voice thing. I don't like I don't like when Justin Bieber does it on the... Uh, the Jamaican uh, accent. Yeah, yeah, when he did the, I am the one yeah, for you. Yeah. Like, if, you, if it's the fucking 60s and you're Paul McCartney doing, oh, bloody, oh, blood, like, that's... Fine, because back then no one fucking told you like, hey, actually the rules are you right. don't be racist <laughs> when you make music like that. That fucking gets grandfathered, and it, maybe it shouldn't, but it, it just it just does. I, like, what is your excuse, Taylor? To I almost said audio blackface, but uh, like that that's <laughs> that is uh, that is a strong that term. would be that that would be overstepping it. Okay, but good thing you didn't do that then. Yeah, I just I I don't know. I think that it's uh, that it's a little not great uh, on this album. There's I don't think it's done to be hurtful. By the way, but. okay, right, yeah. Uh, on this album, there's clearly intent for her to come off as like this sexy bad girl yes she a lot it's, of it's a lot of the sex talk yes it's all over this album and it's not subtle yeah um or a lot of it's just also like being naked talk yeah it's just like get me naked yeah or, that song dress yeah it's i bought just this about, dress gonna, just so you could take it off yeah which i mean like i don't call hate it a night it. good for her <laughs> i think that i feel like there's a natural progression there for a lot of people oh yeah this just, had like, to come. she had to either say fuck or talk about sex on this album yeah. one of the two so uh good for her she she pulled it off better than i expected her to hmm. one of the sexiest songs on the album was don't blame me yes don't blame me uh what did i i don't have a note on that it was on my computer uh, uh my note on it is just sexy yeah very very sexy, sexy song. song uh but the sexiest song is delicate Delicate's a really good song. I like that. Delicate uh, just puts sex in your head. Like, she's not saying sex, 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 sex. That's the best kind of sexy song. Exactly. Totally. It's that. It's like how Royals is a hip-hop song. She's not rapping, but she's giving you all... She's assembling a hip-hop song in your head. That's the stuff that I have the biggest appreciation for. When yeah. It's like when somebody's like, I want to fuck you, hmm. but... They don't come they out and say it. it. They put it in your head yeah. by dancing around it, right? And uh, like sending messages in in a way because anybody can come out and say, "Hey, I want to fuck you." Yeah, if you can get there without Not my action. experience. <laughs> uh, fair enough, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I really like that song. Uh, I also liked. Is it? Uh, so it goes. There's yes, so it goes was very good. Yeah, uh, I fucking love the line. Uh, you did a number on me. But who's counting? 
Ooh. That is Uh-oh. an awesome line. Oh, math spe- joke. <laughs> Especially when she follows it up with, uh, you did a number on me, but who's counting? One, two, three. And then it comes in with like a big, uh, a big explosion of music. Speaking of big explosions of music, uh, I got to my explosion of vomit out of my mouth. When I heard, and this is not a knock on this song. I've had the, I had the conversation with you. I already, I already had it with gave you, I'm so glad that I gave you my take on this before you came back with yours. Right. But you're correct. I, yes, I do, right. No, well, and correct. we, we agreed with, with everything that we said. Um, generally Shocker. with, general, no, like generally with Taylor, we, we make the same point just in different ways. Like yeah. we kind of, we get there different, different ways. Uh, what's it called? Getaway car? Yeah. Getaway Car sounds more like a Bleachers song than Bleachers than a, any Bleachers song. It's produced by Jack Antoff, correct? Like, it's got well, that's that? no, you confirm no, that? it's got to be. And it I, would be I'd be very that interested because you, right? Uh, what was it? The Gorgeous, Gorgeous, like was super Jack Antonoff, yeah, and, and it was, it was, Max, it was Martin. Max Martin. So this yeah. would be hilarious if we just went in on this for being so Jack Antonoff. Well, that would but speak to really how problematic is. Jack Antonoff True, is. Then he's infecting if, everybody else. Yes, and he totally has. But this uh, Getaway Car has uh, an awesome chorus. I yeah. think the, co- the chorus is awesome, but you are correct that it is the most Jack Antonoff thing ever. Too many, like, big explosions, too <laughs> many gang vocals, too many, like, oh, I'm going to run over here and bang this drum. Like, it sounds like a Bleacher song, but that's not inherently a bad thing. No. Like, we've established I that like we bleachers like Bleachers. For, the like, good, off the bat for a reason. Right. Bleachers has good stuff. This is a good Bleacher song. But do you know what Bleachers is? Bleachers is, uh, I think I've sent you the clip before, it's an Arrested Development when Job is uh, pitching his ideas to his new employer. And he's like, how about we do a gated community yes, yeah, with yeah, only singles yes. called Single City? And he's yes. like, great. And then the narrator's like, but over the course of the week, Job's idea, like Job did not come up with any more ideas. And every day it's him pitching that same exact idea. And he's like, what do we do with like the the prudes? We don't let them in. I call it Swing City. And then it just it eventually it gets to just, check your lease, man, because you're living in Fuck City. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's so, what Jack Antonoff is. I, yeah, he, he, he had goes one back good idea, way, yeah. and he has done it a million fucking times. Right, uh, but if this is the if this is the option that we need to if, if these are the two options on the table, if we need to take in uh, out of the woods or a song like this, I'm taking a song so that's like thing, this. That's the thing. It is out of the woods. It's it's, not. The, it's the out of the woods of this album. It's it's a I like it better than out of the woods because it's, maybe structurally, yeah. but like out of the woods uh, is just like a it's. It has no substance. Out of this the woods song has some. Out of the woods is a non-single on a Bleachers album, and uh, Getaway Car is a single on a Bleachers album. Okay. In fact, I think uh, that if Taylor were trying to do her old trick of start with something mediocre and then do something that'll be more accessible to everybody, I this thought that the, Getaway Car should have be been the second, second single. This yeah, would be the second one, and everybody right. would have lost their shit over it. Right, and like again, like I don't love the song. It's it, Getaway Car is 100 percent going to be a single off this album. Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's. Uh, I would definitely place it in the bottom half of this album, but it's definitely single material, and that's it's literally for, on the bottom half of this album. Right, uh, <laughs> but like just like ranking yeah. tiers wise, it's. I think it's one of the worst songs. But because of what it's, pop it's music is right now and how much it's like – like Jack Antonoff, we've built up our immunity to Jack Antonoff that we're now kind of less annoyed. I'm, I'm more annoyed because I feel like I've just – I've heard the same thing over and over again. Like there's never any fucking thing new. But I like it. It's but catchy. We, it's but just we not have – for this podcast, we have both representations of kind of the, the people consuming music because you break everything down structurally. I take everything at face value. I fucking love this song at face value. You're annoyed with it structurally because of what it is. Uh, it's going to be a smash hit. Because, oh, definitely, definitely. Because it's just going to be one of those songs that the masses consume and just be like, this fu- this song fucking rocks. And I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to turn it off. when Like, I'm going to enjoy it, right. but uh, it, I just had my throw up from too much Jack Antonoff. <laughs> there, was a, there was a weird thing that happened to us before actually listening to that song. Uh, we both got tagged in a tweet from uh, what seemed to be a Twitter bot. Yes. Um, it was... An account that had no picture, uh, a very weird long name, mm-hmm. but it was... This was its only it was, tweet? It, this was its only tweet. It tagged both of us in it. Yeah. Uh, and it 
specifically mentioned a uh, the top five list. This will that be in we, your top five. Yeah, yeah, it specifically mentioned the top five list that we did for Taylor Swift uh, last week or earlier this week, and it said, "Hey, you're gonna fucking love this song, uh, Getaway Car." Yeah, it'll be it's, in your top five. It'll be in your top five. Amazing chorus unbelievable song like it it was I constructed honestly wonder, like a, it was constructed like a tweet that was designed to hype up the album yeah i think it was a i think i still think it was a bot i think it saw us tweet about top five taylor swift song and they said this will this will be one of your top five so taylor is swift that song. like a taylor swift because uh, like, i i got tagged in a bunch of tweets like really? that from like one follow or one tweet only saying like I'm listening to a leak of, and it's same with that. It said, "I'm listening to a leak." Like I got a leak of the Taylor Swift of Reputation, and man, wait until you hear this, this, and this. Yeah. So, do you think it's a concerted effort on behalf of like it's Taylor like a Swift's Russian people, thing? A no, campaign? no, no. This is like a bad guys people. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I think. I don't, I, a bad guys people is yeah. is just like campaigning to get people to listen to Taylor Swift. Yeah, dude. People, you know that like terrorists con- communicate via Britney Spears Instagram posts. Really? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, they comment uh, they like But they... that's but this is even like communicating back and forth. This is literally just people But maybe there's something in that tweet that's a communication. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's that's it's something bad. Bizarre. Like there there's something fishy there. But I'm glad you mentioned the top 5 list because uh, Does I was anything on this album make it into your top five? No, okay. uh, but I, I was distraught. Not yet. It's way too fucking early. Way too soon. Yeah. I was uh, distraught, disappointed, upset. Uh, it was kind of a you think you know a guy moment. Maybe you were just fired up. Maybe you were heated. Maybe you were dug in. Lord knows I do that. You said after the top five list came out uh, that I knew you were trouble was garbage. Uh, you said it, like it, it is literally. You said it stinks out loud. Uh, that's that. It's just a. It's a very uh, upsettingly wrong take. But this is what I was thinking of. This is what I realized as I was listening, and I was like, "Oh, Pete's gonna get so mad when uh, when he hears this." I knew you were trouble. Might be Taylor Swift's most important song ever because Why? this fucking album. Definitely this album and a lot of 1989 does not happen without I Knew You Were Trouble. That was what made Taylor be like, I'm going to start doing some electro pop shit. And now she's so fucking far along down that path. That was her first step. It was such an important song okay, for her. I, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. But so I'm saying without that song, you don't have this shit. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily make it a good song. There's a difference between being a good song and an important song. Uh, well, it's both. Like it's I I'm still I'm still gonna say that it's not a good song. I don't like that song. Oh man, it's not a good song. I will maybe concede that it's important. Which it has is terrible. Fun. It has a terrible verse, but it it's intentional. It was a necessary evil. It I guess sets up that sets up that break. You thought you were gonna have me like really backed in and cowering in a corner with that take, but uh, I I think it's fine. I mean, it's it's fine if that's an important song. It doesn't mean I have to like it. I'm not saying that you have to like it. I'm saying like th- I'm saying that this. May, yeah, it could have it, it could have been a big step in Taylor Swift's career. Career, but there is there's a reason why uh, why that song isn't. Do you as... like new? I'm saying like so. This is a better way of putting it. If you like, if you really like new Taylor, it's because of. Okay, I, knew I, can, I can I can I can respect the take that I have to give credit to. I knew you were trouble for getting her where she is. Yeah, but I don't have to give credit to. Uh, I knew you were trouble for being a good song. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, uh, my, I don't have an issue with the last song on it, uh, New Year's Day, but I kind of do. Is she classic. Tra- is she, the last two albums, she tries in certain spot spots to be Sarah Bareilles, and it's so like transparent. And this song is. Basically every Sarah Bareilles move she has in her arsenal, and it just doesn't all go together. If for for a final song on an album, uh, I need it to be amazing, and I think that I'm not going to re-listen to this song. How a many lot. final songs on albums though are amazing? So many. I mean, there's there's a good number, but uh, I I don't feel like what was the last song in 1989? Uh, uh, what's it called? The... I always get confused with that because I. Because of the bonus tracks, was it clean? It might have been clean. Yeah, which I didn't love clean. Right. Um, but I think I'm I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back because I was definitely correct about um, 
what's the fucking name of that song? Uh, uh, call it what you want. Call it what you want, because I everybody was kind of low on that song. But, well, not not really. People were people were excited about that song because it was the best of the four that she'd put out, or like the most classic of the four that she put out, and. But you were down on it because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't big. It lacked a big chorus or whatever. But it is a really good end of the album song. I think in I, context, it belongs where it is. Yes, definitely. But I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Uh, like you're saying that it's album filler. It. I mean, it's it's not going to knock your socks off. It's yeah. a it's a very easy, uh, enjoyable listen towards the end of an album when you expect things to fall off. Like, yeah, like there there needs to it needs to have not necessarily a lull, but like it needs to kind of dip down. And with Taylor Swift albums. It usually kind of gets softer right. more than anthemic, where a lot of albums kind of go the other way. I but, think people's biggest issue with it was that it was a single, a pre a pre release single, and they expected more out of it, and it just lacked the 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 peaks yeah. that you would want from a, a single like that. Well, not, not 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 even from a single from any song like that is that's like the most dead. So, and you can have you can have a song that's just. A voice and a piano, and it's still way bigger than what that is. That just – the needle doesn't move during that song. It should have gone somewhere, whether up or down. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. I'm still not turning that song off, though. I don't think that right. this I, – I don't think that this album has a bad song. Like, I, like, I I'm going to – I think what you made me do is a bad song. Uh, no. I yeah. think that uh, I was texting somebody about it. Uh and they said there is not a bad song. They said officially zero bad songs. I said agree. Gorgeous, call it what you want. Ready for it are the low lights, but none of them are bad songs. Uh, gorgeous might be a bad song. Gorgeous, I think is a is a pretty bad <laughs> song. Uh, also, this is why we can't have nice things is a really bad song in that album. Uh, I forget it already, but I didn't. You might not have listened to it because uh, one, the album hasn't come out yet. And okay. Two, uh, if we had gotten a leak, it might have been forgotten in the email. Oh, so, there so was, maybe there, had I listened, I wouldn't have even heard it. Right. Exactly. And uh, if. Once it had been forgotten, maybe we would have gotten a second email uh, giving us that forgotten song. Oh, okay. So, well, that would be nice of that person. It's a bad song. You didn't miss much. If okay. You, if you, you worse would than have much. worse than the three that I just said. Yeah. I think and so. do you agree that that's probably the bottom half? I know that you also put uh, "Look yeah. What You Made Me Do" yeah. in there. Uh, well, I think "Look What You Made Me Do" is a bad song in the same way that um, that "Shake It Off" is a bad song. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and. Like get getaway car is a bad song in how ridiculous it is, but it's just so like everything about it's catchy. I I don't have a major problem with it. Um, also, uh, ready for it is a lot better of a song in context when it opens the album. Yes, like or, or just just now that I've heard the other songs, maybe it's like once I've heard Endgame and hearing her do that shit that I'm like okay. Not not at all problematic that okay. she's rapping. It's it it doesn't make me as uncomfortable as it did on uh, the. I also love lessons. it in the context of like it's called "Ready for It" and it has the ellipsis at the beginning. Yeah, and it's like it's it's because it's such a switch up for Taylor Swift. So for her to open like a very different album with a song like that that's titled "Are You Like Are You Ready for It." And then it comes in with like a really really big different sound. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's a cool song. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll do for sure way more, Taylor, probably Monday, because this shit's not going to end. But those are our initial thoughts. Uh, let's hit some reviews right quick. Lola McFly says, Grade A, Top Choice Podcast. If you're looking for a description of this podcast, you won't get one from me because I really can't tell you. But what I can say is the bad boys make me wish my 12-minute drive to work was longer and my greatest victory is knowing DJ approves of my favorite movies. Speaking of movies, I still can't believe that Pete has yet to bask in the glory of Guy Patterson and his shades. Anyways, everybody should listen to this podcast if only to hear DJ and Pete confirm that Colin Jost is, in fact, a weatherman. Good review. It is. Cr- I, th- I think you were close recently to... Uh, you saw me watching that thing you do on a plane and you were like... And you, you I could tell that genuinely you were like man i'm gonna watch that soon like i i, I can't wait to actually yeah, watch I it i haven't actually if i were to ever come across it like yeah. on a streaming service or something like that yeah i would watch it i just haven't been presented with the opportunity i've probably got the dvd somewhere okay i can toss it to you uh not me or me bad at titles 
comma, good at listening to brunch by not Steve Harrington. Uh, as someone who currently has no idea what she's doing with her life, listening to Pete and DJ give the hottest takes around gives me the motivation to get through the week. On a lighter note, I really relate to how excited you guys get about Portillo's. Oh, Portillo's so the best. Good. Uh, anyway, keep it up because you guys are the best and my Mondays and Fridays would be much less interesting without brunch in them. Thank you very much. Uh, not Steve Harrington. That's a bummer that you're not Steve Harrington. Yeah, that everybody sucks. wishes they could be. I wish you were Steve Harrington. Uh, <laughs> Steve Harrington's band is playing in Boston tonight, but he's not there. I don't know if he's not what in the, the band fuck? anymore or something. But that would stink going to anybody, see those guys. Yeah, yeah. Why would anybody go see a band point doing Steve that? Harrington? Yeah, sounds uh, terrible. <laughs> if you want to leave us a review, go to listentobrunch.com/slash/review. Or if you want to subscribe to this podcast that you're listening to right now, if you're not subscribed for some reason, go to listentobrunch.com/slash/subscribe. Uh, guess what I did today. Uh, you J-O'd. Uh, well, that's, I don't, no. Uh, uh, I legitimately, I I played that out. I legitimately knew right off the bat that the answer to that was no. Um, I had a doctor's appointment and I was reminded that there is no, like, I'm not the best at many things. I'm the best at a few things, but. I am the fucking best at doctor's appointments. Like, especially, like, I got I got a couple tests done. Okay. That is my, I realize, like, that is my fucking wheelhouse in life. Having to spend just, like, very little time with somebody, and they're going to be friendly to me anyway, and I can very easily make their day. I think I can, sh- I shine in that moment like fucking nobody else can. I can see that. Yeah. Like, I mean... That's what. That's all of your relationships, basically. Your best relationships are the ones that you know are going to last like a minute and a half yeah. to three minutes, and that you have nothing to lose. Yeah, it's just like. For, but for some, I'm a thousand times funnier. I'm just. I'm thinking of shit. You that go just, for it, and yeah. you don't overthink it because you know that 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 relationship is going to expire yeah. very quickly. It's, it's a throwaway like away relationship. It's like uh, I used to be more of like. like a, a, I would travel a lot for work. I, I felt that I was a lot more social. Uh, when I would be on the road, then like if I were hanging out in a bar in a city where I don't live, I was a way cooler guy than if I'm hanging out at a bar in Boston because I'm like, ah, fuck, I, I have to see all you guys. But yeah, man, I was, I had to do a, you know what a barium swallow is? No. I've had to do them before. It's gross. It's, uh, they give you this, this cup. It's you the heaviest. Get, made a get, met a guy named Barium. Cool. Uh, <laughs> it's like the heaviest cup in the world and it's this shit. It's so fucking thick, and they have you drink it, and they take pictures of like your Ugh. insides while you're drinking mm. it to see if mm. something. Because uh, this this was no for thanks. a throat thing, so they need to look at my throat and see like I don't know if there's like some holes or something. Maybe like the barium like squirts out or something. They're like, oh, I got s- <laughs> now the now the barium's in your fucking ear or something. I don't know. Uh, so they were so that is so gross. It tastes very bad. Okay, and then they have you. They just like have you drink a bunch of different things, and they're taking all these pictures. And uh, at the end, the doctor, as he was kind of like, t- he was taking the X-ray thing, the thick thing that you wear, you know. Yeah. He was taking that off, and he said, uh, he said, "To go cup," and right off the top, <laughs> of my it was like it took no. I, I said, "No, I'm driving." Fuck the bodies of the technicians are still on the fucking floor in there. That joke fucking <laughs> killed. It was um, there were three people in there and they all fucking died. They're they're fucking like getting an after dinner dr- after work drink because of me right now just to talk about that <laughs> you fucking pull, guy. Did you pull a Costanza and just immediately walk out? I walked out. Oh, yeah. They were like, "Oh, you also have to drink <laughs> this." I was like, "No, no, no, I'm driving. You heard it. Bye." That is a uh, I think it's, it's That was one of like six funny things I did though. But I I do think that it's a little sad that like the best the things that you're best at are the disposable things in life like the things that oh no only I've known matter, that for a while only matter I've, for like three minutes I've gotten used to that <laughs> yeah if like the longer you know me the more I'm gonna deteriorate in front of you so oh, trust me I know yes it's happened yeah uh, another thing that I wanted to hit on uh, there was uh, there was new Chromio that came out this week yeah what'd you think I liked it okay. I can already tell that your face is. Nee. Good, not great. I yeah, thought it was good. There, so that was typical Chromio. Yeah, it's, uh, it's for sure typical like not, Chromio. Not, not quite good enough. That's that's kind of always... I, I love them because I like what they do, but they are, they've they always been not quite good enough. They have like they have like five or six really, really good songs, and a lot of the other ones are like that, where part of the chorus is really cool, and then none of the rest of the song is interesting. 
Yeah, the chorus is uh, is very cool, um, but in between is just like I can. It's they're it a could huge be need to work with co writers band. Yeah, like yeah. if if they worked with like like Max because, Martin could do for them what he did for the weekend. Like okay. you got some some cool stuff. You're like clearly could, a cool they artist. They could put together a song that fucking bumps and has a great chorus. Yeah, but they needed to work on the filler stuff. Yeah, I think that uh, jealous and. Old 45s are the only two songs of theirs that, that like, just blow go from beginning yeah. to end and never fucking... Old 45s is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, that's one but of my favorites. I will put this as a uh, a a good Chromeo song and not just a good enough. I will put it as a good Chromeo song. Yeah. Um, what do you have for songs this week? Uh, I'm going to add Juice by Chromeo. I'm nice. going to add it. Uh, I'm going to also add uh, The World's Best, Best American Band. By uh, White yes, Reaper. by White Reaper. Yes, yeah, I saw they're Scott, awesome. Scott McLaughlin uh, share that song today. Yeah, I guess they're playing in they're, Boston. Tonight. I did not know that, and I'm very upset about it. Yeah, they're playing in Boston tonight. Uh, I listened to that song. That's the only uh, my only exposure to them. I've heard that one song. I didn't check out anything. They else. have a song called Judy Finch that's big. Okay, and it's awesome. And the uh, Alex Daddario is in the music video. Oh, yes. good for them. Uh, my buddy Jim also shared a song today uh, by Pup and Finn Wolfhard's in the video. Oh, it's really? A very sad video, um, but I think it's cool that Finn Wolfhard is also like a just a cool kid who's working with Pup. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna add "World's Best American Band" by White Reaper, and then I'm gonna add "Getaway Car" by Taylor Swift. Oh, that's the one that you yep. add? That's dude. I mean, I'm telling you, is that I'm... your favorite song on the album? It is right now. Oh, I'm b- very basic. Th- that's good. Like. I, I accept my basicness, yeah. and that is probably Please, one of my favorite songs yeah, on the album right you're now. You're preaching to the choir. Um, you don't have to don't have to apologize for fucking being basic to me. Um, I am going to add uh, "Delicate" by Taylor Swift. Okay, and I am going to add "All About It" by Hootie Allen featuring Ed Sheeran. Uh, if you if for some reason you guys haven't heard Ed Sheeran rap, listen to that song. <laughs> it's a good one. Go with a. In case you guys hadn't heard of Ed Sheeran, he's coming up. Watch out! You should. Uh, you should get on that radar. Watch out! And also, uh, the new Wolfpack album, Mister Finish Line, came out this week, and I love it. It's just great. It's called Baby I Don't Know O, and or I Baby I Don't Know O O, and it's originally by uh, Ryan Lerman, who was. Did you do you know Pomplamoose? Pomplamoose? Yeah, no, I don't know they, they were the guy and the girl. They would do this. They would do songs, but they were videos, and the videos were them recording the songs. Mm-hmm. And they did a they did commercials for uh, they did Christmas commercials for something, and they had really annoying commercials. Okay, but uh, they're good. But uh, Ryan okay. Lerman was kind of part of did this like a fucking Toyota commercial. They did, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, was it? Were they in the cars? Yes. Okay, and they yeah, were like they were like chasing each yeah. other. They were okay, playing yeah. around. They were those, cutesy. Yeah. Natalie Dawn is the girl's name, and Jack Conti is the guy. Uh, so they kind of started that trend, and then Ben Folds got in on it. And there's this guy Ryan Lerman. He had a song called "Baby I Don't Know uh, What I'm Gonna Do with You," I think. And Wolfpack recorded it. This was like years ago, like five years ago. Like was wasn't popular or anything. But Wolfpack just wanted to do a cool rendition of it, and they made it like that, like Donny Hathaway's version of Jealous Guy. It's also like uh, Fire in the Hole by Steely Dan, and you'll know when you listen what I'm talking about, like the kind of way that the song drives. So. This this version of that song is terrific, and the guy who sings on it, a guy named Charles Jones, the vocal runs that that guy can do, he's just unparalleled. He's really creative. It's a really, really good song. So I'm going to add that, and I think, yeah, that's three songs. Good for you. You we, can count. Yeah. Uh, one, what was it, what did you say? One, oh, um, oh, you did a number on me, but who's counting? And you can count on me to wait for you, you in the parking, <laughs> in the parking lot. lot. Uh, Kevin Spacey was supposed to be in All the Money in the World, which is a Ridley Scott. I think Ridley Scott is doing that movie, mm. but it's about uh, J. Paul Getty. Yes, uh, I, I forget what it's about. He's but like it, an it, oil tycoon. His his son-in-law or nephew-in-law gets fucking kidnapped, and yeah. he's supposed to pay the ransom, and Mark Wahlberg's in it, and shockingly, he plays a hero. So um, then, I guess... No, I don't know if that would have been problematic. I was going to say the hero was that movie being 
uh, scrapped because now we don't have to see well, that the, Mark well, Wahlberg role. Well, the movie wasn't scrapped. They replaced. Oh yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, 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 replaced, they reshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah which I'm is sorry. That is a wild level of uh, get the fuck away from me. Right, exactly. <laughs> of they were finished with the movie. Uh, I had seen the preview for this movie in theaters. Uh, Kevin Spacey looks all sorts of uh, fucked up. He plays like a really old guy. He doesn't look anything like Kevin Spacey. So they went through a lot of work to get Kevin Spacey into this movie. Yeah. Uh, like, he was for sure the guy that they wanted to play, J. Paul Getty. Oh, yeah. And uh, once you go to that length to pull a guy out of your movie, yeah. you fucking know that he's all done. Yeah. Uh, and uh, speaking of all done, uh, and speaking of uh, sick beats, yeah, Louis C.K. Yeah. is a sick bastard who's beating off in front of women, which... That's kind of old news at this point because that shit has been going around for a long time, but it was finally confirmed, which it's really disappointing, even though it's not shocking. Yeah. I'm very disappointed because I've loved Louis C.K. for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like, I don't even know what else can be said. I mean, if, if everyone should have read the New York Times story, um, everyone should have gone back and looked at the, the Gawker story from 2015. Uh, he's, I mean... I don't know what fucking else to say other than it's just like cre- that. Like that's it's, it's so fucking creepy. gross, and it's like like it's it comes out that like like the, the hits just keep coming. Basically, well, it's, that it's that wild all these this fucking one. powerful guys are the worst people in the world. It's wild for this one because it is exactly what everybody said it was uh, for the longest time about Louis C.K. Yeah, that he literally just like drops his pants and jerks off in front of unsuspecting it's women. So fucking weird. It's so strange. I don't understand it, but like it, that is literally Why didn't he come out and control the message? He cuz what is he going to control? I mean, I get when like, it's true and yeah. like literally the rumors are exactly on point to the point where Gawker posted uh posted like those rumors 2 years ago, 2 or 3 years ago. Uh and had it down to the exact it was detail really close, of where yeah. it was, yeah. And it was like a, it was like two comedians. He asked him to go back to his hotel room for like a nightcap, yeah. And he just immediately just started jerking off in front of him. They had the exact city that it happened in, yeah. And well, there there were definitely there were discrepancies. There were some discrepancies between the two stories. But it was like it was, it was very that. close. It was that like maybe I don't know if it's like, some things the New York Times couldn't get confirmed or whatever. But um, yeah, uh, what I guess what I thinking is he's gonna have to address this at some point, and I don't know if it helps him at all to be like, hey, there are these rumors about me. I've done this. It's disgusting. Blah blah, and start fucking begging for forgiveness I mean, that you're he, not going to get but he for sure had time to yeah to he had years one, to do I it yes well not even that he had time upon this knowing <laughs> upon knowing that the new york times new york times was uh was working on something because everybody knew the new york times was working on something uh he he had a movie premiere which was canceled uh this week before the new york times thing dropped he was pulled from colbert yeah, uh, before the New York Times thing dropped, but everybody that was all was, today, right? But everybody was talking about it. He, he obviously knows what they have on him, and they they probably reached out for comment. They did. Okay, so he knew what exactly that they had. Uh, and well, no, not if if they reached out for to him if they want to talk to him about it and he declined, then he doesn't know what they have. They don't say, "Hey, we." If have- they say we, we, we want to talk about these allegations, then he's he probably needs to. In his mind, and there was the, this was the Gawker story. the The guy who emailed him and said, "Hey, you assaulted yeah, two people called, I know," and he them, called him because he just wanted up. to find out what he yeah. knew. Like he seemingly, according to the New York Times, he didn't do that. He could have, but he didn't. Yeah, but once once you have the film premiere canceled and you're pulled from Colbert, yeah. and, and it's still like a little bit of time before the before the New York Times article comes out, you can't formulate a statement in like a couple of hours. I know to be like, hey, yeah, I did this. It was fucked up. Maybe he was doing that, and it just he didn't have enough time to get it out. But he had time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care about him. He's a creep. It's just I. I'm I like, think this one for me is like what Kevin Spacey is to you because you <laughs> fucking love Kevin Spacey and you were you could tell. No, nah, nothing will be bigger than Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby really? like broke my heart. <laughs> I think Bill Cosby just like made me 
depressed about celebrities forever. So, like, honestly, when Kevin Spacey came out, I was like, oh, fucking God. And then when Louis well, C.K. came out, point, I'm like, what? F- just at this point, like, w- just get rid of them all. <laughs> right. At this point, can you really be shocked by anything? That no comes more male out celebrities. <laughs> just the, they're them. all done. It's like the steroid era. Just like I'm just assuming now that you're all just fucking creeps. You're you're just all done. No more. That's why I only listen to Haim. 